So there's a number of different discovery methods that you can use, and you can actually use a combination of these to discover the devices on your network. So they include Active Directory Forest Discovery, Active Directory System Discovery, uh, user discovery, group discovery. Those are all the Active Directory related ones, which means that we're actually querying a portion or section of our Active Directory uh, where we have information about our users and our computers. So we can gather up a lot of that information. Then you have a network discovery. And within network discovery, there's a number of different methods as well, like doing uh, a scan of IP addresses or subnets. Uh, and then you have a heartbeat discovery. So let's look at each of these in a little bit more detail. First of all, the Active Directory discovery methods, uh, the forest discovery is all about identifying the network topology. So there's information in your Active Directory about all of the subnets that have been defined inside of Active Directory. So you can have a quite a large network with a lot of uh, different sites or geographic locations, and each of those has a number of different subnets uh, defined in the Active Directory for them. And so when we do a forest discovery, it's basically a way that we can scan the Active Directory and grab a lot of that topology information and bring it into the database. That way we can use that information when we start defining things like subnets and boundaries in Config Manager, we can utilize the fact that we already discovered a lot of that in our Active Directory. So when you're doing a forest discovery, you're not actually discovering resources. With forest discovery, you're just learning about and discovering and pulling in information about the network topology. We can use that info later. Um, for all other Active Directory uh, discovery methods, that would include user discovery, group discovery, and system discovery, we're actually specifying a particular Active Directory container. Now, what does that mean? Well, that could be a specific OU, or it could be the actual domain itself. If we specify the name of a domain, that's a container object. And we can say to scan through the entire domain to discover computer resources or user resources. Um, or we could just focus in on a particular OU. And then when we discover something out of that OU, we're creating the DDR record based on what we found. Um, there's other options in there that we can specify as we scan the network, uh, as we scan the Active Directory. One of those options is to specify a schedule. When do we actually want to pull the Active Directory and run those queries? Is it once a night? Is it once a week? Because we need to go and rediscover, or I shouldn't say rediscover, but discover new records that have been created or new computer objects that have been created in the Active Directory domain. So Active Directory discover, discovery queries the AD and finds objects that way. It's probably one of the most efficient and best places to start with your discovery process. Network discovery um, has a number of different methods for scanning the actual network. In this case, you're actually connecting to IP addresses. You're trying to find out if there's a system behind that IP address that can give you a little bit of information. So it actually performs a scan of your network. Uh, it can scan an IP range, so we could give it a range of IPs to look at, or designated subnets where we could be very, very specific. Or this is an example where we could take some of the Active Directory site information, which is the topology information that we gathered in our AD uh, topology discovery, and we can bring some of that information in. Now discovery, uh, we can discover certain types of information. It says topology, topology and client, topology client and client operating system. So when we configure our discovery, we can determine, well, how much info am I trying to get out of these systems as I scan them? Typically, we might say the, you know, we want all of the information, but it can't always get all of the information. So we'll look at that as well. Now, heartbeat discovery. Heartbeat discovery is kind of a unique one, and it's the only one that's really enabled by default, and you should leave it enabled. Don't disable this. What it does is it refreshes the information about existing clients or systems that have already been discovered. It's kind of a refresh, um, and we need that refresh. 
So as it says, uh, refreshes the Configuration Manager client computer discovery data in the site database. Heartbeat Discovery runs every seven days by default. We need to rediscover that information because there's timeouts and there's cleanup of the database. If I'm not rediscovering, if I'm not seeing these devices exist anymore, eventually we want them dropping out of the database since we can clean up a lot of that information. So don't turn this off because eventually there's going to be a cleanup that happens. And if I've turned off the heartbeat discovery, we may lose some uh, val valid information. So it's the process of rediscovering existing devices. So leave that one on. Now, we can monitor the discovery process by using component status and also log files. So there's a lot of components as we start to dive into working with Config Manager, you'll find that there are so many components, dozens and dozens and dozens of components. Components can be thought of in a lot of ways as like services, individual processes that run as a part of the overall Config Manager environment. And they have these names that start with SMS. So usually they're in a naming convention of SMS underscore something. Now that's a a throwback term to the early days of this product when it used to be called uh, Systems Management Server or SMS. So it's not called that anymore because now it's Config Manager, but uh, it still has the legacy naming. So you'll see the components named with these underscore names. SMS underscore AD Forest Discovery Manager, SMS AD System Discovery Agent, and so on. All kinds of different components that you could look at. When you go into your site uh, system status, look up these um, components and check their status. Hover over them and you'll get the messages, error messages or display messages. And then also they have corresponding log files that you can see listed here. In the logs directory of your installation folder are dozens and dozens of logs. Why so many logs? Well, there's a different log file for every single component. So just look up the appropriate log file to try to troubleshoot some of these uh, elements.